Welcome back to the third part of mindfulness. This is the quick start guide for recovery from addiction and co-occurring disorders. And I'm still your host, Dr. Donnelly Snipes. We're going to continue to explore mindfulness, but in this unit, we're going to talk about ways mindfulness can help reduce emotional and physical distress, pain, and cravings, improve sleep and relationships. Mindfulness helps you transition from reacting to acting. A lot of times in your addiction, you may feel bad, you may feel stressed, and then you react by using. When you're depressed or when you're anxious, you start feeling that feeling, and when it becomes intolerable, then you react. Instead, we want to be proactive. If you get up in the morning and you notice that you're anxious or you notice that at some point you're having, starting to have cravings, it's important to be proactive. Mindfulness helps you notice it early on instead of waiting until it's a crisis. Mindfulness helps you make more efficient and effective use of your energy by making the right decisions the first time. Stephen Covey calls this beginning with the end in mind, but basically you always check what you're getting ready to do against your ultimate goals. And you ask yourself, is doing this right now, even if it would make me feel a lot better immediately, is this in my best interest to help me achieve my overall goals? Mindfulness encourages self-awareness and self-compassion. We want to learn to understand ourselves, understand our triggers, learn to see the big picture and understand our environment. And that will also help us move towards understanding others, which reduces stress in relationships and a whole host of other things. So spend about 30 minutes looking back over the day yesterday. If you had been more mindful, what problems could you have prevented? If you had been aware of your vulnerabilities, whether it was pain or exhaustion or poor time management, how might you have conducted your day differently? Remember, vulnerabilities are things that make us more, guess what, vulnerable to distress. So what things made you feel like you were off that day? Um, you know, again, pain, exhaustion, poor time management, you were hungry, uh, blood sugar was low. What things contributed to your problems that if you would have been more self-aware, you may have been able to do something about so they didn't end up contributing to your problem. Mindfulness helps reduce inefficiency through planning and prioritizing. It helps you main maintain awareness to prevent or mitigate discomfort. We can't always prevent discomfort. We can't always prevent pain. My back hurts today, for example, and I can't prevent that. You know, there are just some days, you know, the weather changes, whatever, my back hurts. But I can mitigate that discomfort by, you know, when I got up this morning, I knew my back was kind of sore, so I did my stretches. I took a nice hot shower. I am making sure to get up and move around throughout the day to keep the pain from getting worse. We can do the same thing with emotional pain. And mindfulness helps us balance and renew our resources, energy, and health to create a sustainable, long-term, effective lifestyle. Basically, if we're mindful, we're constantly checking in with ourselves, and we're saying, okay, just like a car only has so much gas in the gas tank, we only have so much energy and we have to parcel out that energy, use that energy in ways that are meaningful to help us achieve our overall goals. If we're just using that energy willy nilly, then we may never move forward to our goals. So if we're mindful and we regularly ask ourselves. Is doing this going to help me move closer to my goals? Then we are using our energy purposefully and it keeps us aware. You start noticing, for example, when you're, maybe you've been doing a lot of stuff and you're starting to feel run down. Well, that's where that uh, ability to renew your resources comes in. You notice that you're starting to get run down. So then you can, guess what? Participate. You describe the situation. You say, I'm feeling run down. My motivation's starting to get low. 
What can I do to improve the next moment to help me continue to move towards my goals? Instead of waiting until you are so exhausted that you are trying to live on stimulants, which is not good for your health, for your mood, or for addiction recovery. So spend 30 minutes checking in with yourself. How do you feel physically? How do you feel affectively? Remember, that means emotionally. And how do you feel cognitively? Are you in a negative mindset where you're just grumpy about everything? Or are you thinking, are you feeling clear headed and creative and maybe positive even? What do you need to do right now to improve the next moment? If you're doing great, if you feel great physically, you're in a good mood, you're thinking positively, well, that's good. How can you keep that going? But if there are some little hiccups in there, if there are some vulnerabilities, what can you do to improve the next moment? You know, maybe it's one in the afternoon, you know, you ate lunch, you're starting to feel a little sluggish right now because we all do. That's, that's normal for people to do after lunch. So what do you need to do right now to improve the next moment so you can get re-energized and refocused? What options do you have to meet those needs in the present while still moving towards your goals? What options do you have? You know, maybe you need to get your energy back and get refocused. Okay, well, that's great. What options do you have to make that happen? Ideally, besides using things like coffee, you know, what could you do? And it's important to check in with yourself like this throughout the day. I encourage people to do it at least at every meal. Takeaway activity is anchored mindfulness. So like I said, before each meal, just check in with yourself and consider without judgment. What is your mood? How do you feel emotionally and why? How do you feel physically and why? Do you feel tired? Do you feel, you know, weighted down? Do you feel energetic? Why? Is your attitude positive, ambivalent, or negative? And guess what? Why? How is your concentration? Do you have monkey mind or are you able to focus? And what do you need to do right now to improve the next moment so you can feel even happier, so you can continue moving towards your goals, and so you can adjust your current state of being to be even better than it is right now? Operating on autopilot causes us to push through until we've exhausted our resources or neglected to maintain balance. You know, the old saying, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. Mindlessness causes people to miss relapse warning signs like being hungry, angry, lonely, or tired. I know you've heard those. Mindfulness encourages you to constantly check your energy gauge to see what it's, what's requiring more attention and decide how to balance those demands. Mindfulness can help you reduce emotional and physical distress and pain, become aware of cravings and triggers before they become a big issue, improve your sleep, and improve your relationships. <laughs> 